skills with, who can tell me what's on my head? It's a ruler. We've practiced measuring in class before. Today, we're gonna get to measure. One of Ms. Tam's favorite things to do, so I love practicing our measuring. Now on our rulers, we have two different sides. Hmm, I see that on one side I have some really big numbers that are more spread out, and if I turn it over, I see on the other side I have some smaller numbers that are closer together. I know that our inches are our numbers that are bigger that are a greater distance. Our centimeters are much smaller and have a smaller distance. Centimeter is a smaller amount of measurement and our inches is a greater amount of measurement. And so we've practiced before in class using these different types of measurement to measure things on our paper, to go around our room, measure different things around our room. So today, here's what you're gonna get to do at home. I want you to get on a ruler and we're gonna start on our inches side. So looking at your ruler, you're gonna find the side that has the bigger numbers with the greater measurement between each. Okay, and here's your goal. When I say go, I want you to pause my video and I want you to go around the house and find something, two different measurements. I want you to find something that is two inches long and I want you to find something that is 10 inches long. Okay, two inches and 10 inches. Now before you go, we have two different measuring rules we have to remember. Say them with me. Our first rule is to start at zero. And the second rule is line it up straight. If you don't do those two different things with your ruler, you're not gonna get the right measurement. So go find something that's two inches and go find something that is 10 inches. Ready, go. I hope you found two different things that were two inches and 10 inches. Now, I want you to flip your ruler over. I want you to look at our centimeter side. Our centimeters are much smaller. So just like you found something that was two inches and 10 inches on our ruler, on our inches, now I want you to find something that is two centimeters, very tiny, and something that is 10 centimeters. And I want you to compare what those are like. We're still using the same numbers, but because one is inches and one is centimeters, they're going to be different sizes. So now, go look around your house, pause me, and find something that is two inches and 10 inches. Maybe show sister, maybe go show mom what you found on those two different measurements, and then come on back. Right, nice job. I hope you found some different things around your house with those different measurements. After our video, you can keep going. Go look around the house. Go look for different measurements. Maybe you can find something for every single inch around your house. Remember, when we're measuring, it's important to remember our two different rules like we had just practiced. Start at zero and line it up straight. If we don't use those two, we'll find out in a minute, our measurement is not going to work and it will not be correct. So today you have a really fun math paper that you're gonna to get to work through. It's different than our usual ones. It looks a little bit like this. Your goal is to help the bear get to his cave. So along the side here you have our bears and then along this side you have our different caves. Now our path the bear has to take is not just straight. So you're gonna look at that path and we're going to be using only inches on this paper. So you're only gonna use your greater measurement side, okay, the longer length of measurement, your inches, to measure that line. But before you measure it, you have to guess. You're gonna have, you're gonna give me a hypothesis. Like we've practiced in science, a hypothesis is a guess. A guess at what you think that answer might be before you actually measure. There's like, you would guess what the outcome of the experiment would be before we actually did our experiment. Here, on this side, you're gonna do your, it says my guess. You're gonna put your hypothesis on this side of how many inches you think it is from the bear to the cave, and then you're actually going to do it. You're gonna measure the how long it takes for the bear, the length, to follow the path to his cave. So you're gonna get to do this and figure out all the different lengths, figure out which one's the shortest, which one's the longest. 
And then once you do that, I want you to make your own path at home. Maybe you want to use some string, maybe you want to use some tape. Maybe you can lay out different items in a row, but I want you to create a path and I want you to guess how long it is. And then I want you to actually measure it. Maybe you won't use inches, maybe you will use feet. Now, Miss Stam today has created a path in her classroom. And I have my friend, Mr. Bob the Lion. And his job today is going to get from one place over to the bean bag. Just like our bear needed to get to the cave, Mr. Lion is gonna to get to the bean bag. So take a look at the path that I've made. All right, boys and girls, so here's the path that I created in our room today to get Mr. Lion all the way to our bean bag. Now I use tape along the carpet. You can use anything you want at home, okay, to make a path for maybe you to follow, or a family member to follow, or maybe a stuffed animal you have, to get to a certain destination. So before I measure using feet, I'm gonna make my hypothesis. How long do I think my path is that our lion is gonna to take to get to the bean bag? My guess, my hypothesis is probably about five feet. I know Miss Dan's about five feet tall, and so that's about the same distance if I lay down the rug, about five feet. So it's making that educated guess, my hypothesis, on how long it's gonna take Mr. Lion to get all the way to that side. So now we're gonna experiment. We're gonna actually measure. So I'm gonna use my ruler. I'm gonna measure in feet. You could measure in inches, you could measure in centimeters, you could also do feet as well. So we're gonna count how many feet it's going to take. So we're gonna move Mr. Lion along as we go. So starting at him to the first spot is one foot. We're gonna measure again. To the next spot is one more foot. That makes two feet so far. Now this strip right here is much longer than these two small ones. So my guess is it's gonna be more than one, but let's check. So I have one, I have two, I have three. Three feet plus the two feet I had to start with, we're at five feet now. So he's Now my hypothesis was my path is going to be five feet. Well, I can already tell that's not going to be correct, which is okay because we've already gotten to five feet. We have to keep measuring them, see how many feet all together. So we're gonna keep moving down here. Mr. Lion's at five feet. We're gonna take our ruler leg to where he is. Six feet. Seven feet. Oh, we're gonna move him down, he's at seven feet. <gasps> Looks like we have one more. Here we go. And eight feet. He made it to the bean bag. So at home, I cannot wait to see all of the different paths that you make. Take pictures, send me a video. I'd love to see what your path is you made at home and how creative you guys are. So Mr. Lion, it took you eight feet to get all the way over here. Miss Dam's hypothesis was not correct, but that is okay. It's all about learning and practicing each day. Nice job today, boys and girls. We'll see you later.